Head and neck cancer is a disease uh, comprised of several different types. One, due to environmental carcinogens such as tobacco smoke uh, and uh, heavy alcohol use. And an increasing subset is driven by human papillomavirus or HPV. And so, uh, like lung cancer, HPV negative head and neck cancer is caused by uh, carcinogens that induce DNA damage uh, and tumor suppressor gene alterations and a large number of genetic alterations. Uh, the other way to get to a head and neck cancer is infection by human papillomavirus and uh, that's a different subset that was discovered uh, 30 or 40 years ago and has been increasing in frequency. It has different biological and clinical characteristics. Head and neck cancer is a disease with uh, a large number of uh, genetic abnormalities within the tumor cell. When we think of tumor drivers or driver mutations, we think of oncogenes that have activating mutations. Although those occur to some degree in head and neck cancer, the majority of the genetic alterations in head and neck cancer cells are to tumor suppressors. P53 is the most commonly altered genetic alteration but also we see some activating mutations in the PI3 kinase pathway uh, and uh, other tumor suppressors such as the notch pathway, uh, P16, and others. Additional genetic drivers in head and neck cancer come from the virus oncogenes from human papillomavirus, HPV, and HPV E6 and E7 are other genetic drivers, but they come from outside the cell as a virus infects the cell and turns it into a head and neck cancer cell. When we think about head and neck cancer and its molecular biology, we've come to realize uh, many different aspects related to this disease. One of them is mutational burden. And of course, we've now come to recognize that mutational burden has a impact and implications for the application of immunotherapy. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes, but let's talk about what mutational burden means in the context of head and neck cancer. We normally define it by some measure of the number of mutations per base pair. Uh, usually it's per megabase. And we get a number, uh, depending on the cancer, of somewhere in the hundreds for high mutational burden cancers. We usually talk about numbers in the several hundred. For melanoma, we're even talking about possibly a thousand for uh, cancers that we know have a high mutational rate, like uh, microsatellite instable cancers. Again, we're talking about many hundreds or a thousand. For head and neck cancer, we're really dealing with a moderately mutated cancer. What's interesting is that we always thought that for HPV negative cancers, you know, uh, typically tobacco related, alcohol related, traditional risk factors, we always thought that the mutational load for those cancers would be significantly higher than for HPV positive cancers. Well, it turns out that that is only somewhat true. There are some HPV negative cancers that have very high mutational loads, uh, again, in the several hundred to even, even close to a thousand. Um, what we do see, though, is that HPV positive cancers are also moderately mutated, with mutational loads usually in close to 100 or a little bit over 100. That is not unusual for HPV positive cancers. So, whereas we used to think that the HPV negatives would have a much higher mutational burden than HPV positives, that turns out, on the average, not to be true. There are some HPV negative cancers with a very high mutational burden that we don't see in the HPV positives, but on average, the two appear to be about the same. And the reason that the HPV positives have a higher mutational burden than we thought was because some of the alterations in HPV positives actually disrupt the DNA repair or the translational machinery, resulting in a uh, cycle that, that causes more mutations.